In this episode, I take a Learn to Paint Miniatures kit for a test drive. In this episode of Game Terrain Engineering, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm not making terrain this time. Instead, I'm going to actually work through a kit that teaches how to paint miniatures. Now, I've painted miniatures before. Uh, I am not good at it. I will tell you right out, painting is not my strong point. And especially miniatures. Part of it is just the, uh, you know, the, the detail work. Um, my hands don't shake, but boy, when I hold that paintbrush close and I'm trying to get it to a certain spot, you know, you start getting those little shakes. I just, I, I've always wanted to improve my miniature painting. Uh, I've watched videos on the internet, just like a lot of you probably have, and there are some great, great teachers out there, and they have some great tips. But it usually goes in one ear and out the other because I don't apply it right away. And so I was talking to a friend of mine who paints, and he told me, he said, you know, you should just buy one of those Learn to Paint kits. And I was like, which one? And he told me, and I ended up buying it. And it's this one right here. It's the Reaper Learn to Paint kit. Pretty easy. It's called Core Skills Base Coat Washing Dry Brushing. Right here. And it comes in this nice little carrying case. And let me open it here. You get an instruction sheet, some paints, three minis and some paint brushes. And there's extra spaces in here to, you know, put extra paints, which is a nice nice little touch. In this episode, what I'm going to do is tackle one of the three minis that are in here. I'm going to tackle the very first one, which is called the Skeleton Archer. Uh, I'm going to see, you know, how my results compare to the one on the box. And probably in a later episode, I'll do the second one, which is an Orc Marauder. And then the third one is called Mangu Timur. And he looks like a very strong knight, uh, armor, shield, shield, sword, the works. But it, but it looks very interesting. So I hope this, I hope this is of use to some of you. So I'm going to point the camera down in just a second, and we're going to take a look at the kit in a little more detail. So this is the Reaper Learn to Paint kit, core skills, base coat, washing, dry brushing. In this particular uh, episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through the instructions exactly as they're explained. Let me open this up for you here. So inside, you find the instruction book. There are a total of 11 paints. These are the MSP Master Series paints from Reaper. There are three minis. This is the Mangu Timur. This one is the Orc Marauder. And here we have the Skeleton Archer. And then finally, they tossed in two paintbrushes. It says it's a size two flat and a size zero round. But that's the kit in a nutshell. You can see that they include these slots here for, I guess, storing miniatures and, and obviously more paint. I, I gotta admit, for the price, it's a pretty nice little kit. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna cover just one of the minis in this episode. I'm gonna do the Skeleton Archer because it's actually the first one in the book here, how to paint the, the skeleton. The second one is the Marauder, I believe. Yep, the Orc Marauder. And then the final one is Mangu Timur. Per the instructions, I have washed this with a little bit of dish soap to get, I guess, whatever residue might let be left on the plastic. And I've also used some little tacky, poster tacky, to attach it <laughs> to a white bottle of paint. I, I have a lot of these. I rarely use them, so I don't think I'll be needing this one anytime soon. But it is nice because it's heavy, and I, I think it'll help prevent the, uh, the skeleton from tipping over accidentally. But this is, they say this is to help me, you know, rotate, which I've seen people use different things, attach their minis to different, but this should work just fine. Allows me to work everywhere. Now, step one is called the base coat and it calls for using two paints. Actually, I'm sorry, one. Uh, it, it says I should use the number two flat brush to paint all of the bone areas, including his skull shoulder pad, with a base coat of desert sand. So here is the desert sand right there. And I will take the number two brush, which is the flat one. But anyway, here's my paintbrush. Here's the paint and I'm gonna do it based on the picture I'm here. So let's get to the painting.
Okay, I kind of understand why they chose the skeleton as the first one. Obviously, there's not a lot of extra items, shields and swords and things cluttering it up. The only thing this skeleton has is the quiver, and there's a band right here, right there, a little white band that I didn't paint. And then there's a little bit of the band inside here, which I did end up painting. I realized that I did it, but I, I know I can fix that later. And then, of course, the band, uh, the uh, quiver touches his the bones down here. And I was pretty careful to, to avoid getting, getting the paint in there. Also, right here where the bow touches his knee, it's kind of a tight spot. The only thing that was hard on this, and I have to admit, it was this right foot of his. If you notice, this foot is kind of thin. But this foot's thicker, it's wider, at least if I'm if I'm seeing the toes, toe bones correctly. It looks a little weird, but I'm looking in the instruction book and they've painted it the same way. So the foot's a little wider. But they also show that you can fix this if there's any that gets on the terrain here. I can fix that at a later time. But there is the base coat. Took me all of, you know, three or four minutes. And step two is going to be the wash. And I'll take care of that after this dries. Step two talks about putting a wash on this, and the instructions state to place one drop of the mountain stone with four drops of water. So I'll put one drop here. And four drops of water. It also mentions that I should use the zero uh, brush, number number zero, this very fine one. And it says I can use the number two for large areas like the rib cage, but I'm going to go ahead and just use this one. And it also states that I should only apply the coverage once per area, because if I touch an area, so let's say for example I put it on the skull, it says if I put it on the skull again, I could actually undo what the wash is supposed to do. So I'm going to start at the skull, the head, and I'll move down to the feet and I'll be putting this wash on. Okay, the wash is done. I apologize that the camera is not focusing very well on it. It looks good. I'm liking it. I can definitely see the you know the eye sockets and the rib cage and the, the space between the bones. So I can understand what the purpose of the wash is. I've I've done washes before on terrain, and so I, I definitely understand what they're going for here. I'm going to give this plenty of time to dry. Uh, it doesn't mention to put a second coat on, so I'm just going to leave it as this a single coat. There we go. Now step three is the dry brush of the base color. So it looks like I'll be going back to the base color and doing a dry brush on it next. Now it's time for step three, which is dry brushing the base color. The base color is this desert sand right here. And it's the color that I painted the skeleton initially. So I'm just gonna put a couple drops. And it tells me to use the number two brush, which is right here. And so I'm going to wet the brush with the paint and it says to 
basically just keep brushing until you don't see any more, which that was pretty quick. <laughs> and then I'm just supposed to start hitting all the areas. Okay, I have to admit, it did, <laughs> now I can tell. If I look carefully, and I don't think the, the camera does a good job of, of allowing you to see what I'm seeing, but yeah, the, the dry brushing actually did bring some of the base color back um, and left a lot of the dark, dark areas in between the bones, it left them alone. Pretty cool. And it doesn't really tell me when to stop doing this, so I'm happy with it. I, I, it looks good. So I think at this point I'm just going to stop. That was the dry brushing of the base color. Step four is dry brushing a highlight color. And for this, it's recommending this one, Dragon White. And it gives some very specific instructions on how to do dry brushing. I, I've done some dry brushing before, but this one is actually getting into the nitty gritty of like painting the ribs and painting uh, like the toes, things that there would be some darker shaded areas in. So it's, uh, it, ta it talks about moving, you know, angling this different ways depending on what you're trying to, um, to dry brush. So it sounds pretty interesting. It also mentions that you can't use white on a white paper towel, so it says to use your hand to get off some of the, the white. There we go. So let's take a look and see. Yeah, there's there's really some nice looking highlights on some of the higher parts of the bones. Uh, that's really cool. All right, that's the dry brushing with the highlight color. Now the remaining steps, as the book explain it, we have left over the ground, the quiver, uh, the chest, the strap. The, the bows, uh, the arrow feathers, the bow, and it says the metal ends on the ends. Yeah, there's metal ends on the end of the bow here. The way the instructions tell you to do this is you first paint all those things using the base color. Then you do the wash, and it gives, it gives very detailed recipes for mixing five different washes. There's a wash for the ground, a wash for the bow, a wash for the arrows. After you do the washes, you do a dry brush of the base color of those items, and then you do the dry brush of a highlight color for those items. And again, for the dry, br dry brush of the highlight colors, it gives you recipes for mixing the, um, the highlight color, which a lot of these, it looks like you're just lightening them. So for instance, on the ground, it says to mix two drops of green with one drop of yellow. What I think I'm gonna do here to finish this up and finish this episode is, I am going to do the base coat of all the items first, and then I'm going to do the washes of all the items. Then I'll do the dry brush of the items, and then the dry brush of the highlight color, and that will be that. So let's get started with just the base coat colors for the remaining items.
So what you're looking at right now is the skeleton archer after the base coat colors have been applied. Green, brown, some leather, and then on the back, the blue for the uh, arrow feathers, and then some silver on the tips of the bow and banding on the, uh, the quiver. So I'm gonna let this paint dry, and then the next step is to apply washes. I'm gonna use this tray here to pre-mix my washes. The instructions say for the ground area that it'll be four drops of water to one drop black. So I'll just do that in this first one. And all I'm going to do is just go right down the line, mix my washes first, apply the wash, rinse my brush, dry my brush, and then do the next wash. I'm going to do all this in time lapse. Okay, now the washes are done, and it is time for the next step, which is dry brushing base colors onto the bow, the grass, quiver, feathers, strap, the little ring here, and the tips of the bow. So I'll go ahead and do that next. I am to the last step, which is going to be dry brushing highlight colors on various items like the bow and the grass. Again, the instructions provide very good uh, details on the types of paints to mix. Um, for example, the bow and arrow shafts, it says to mix two drops of leather brown with one drop of desert sand. I'm going to follow the instructions very carefully. I'm going to do this final dry brush highlight and we'll see what the final skeleton looks like. But right now, I'm pretty pleased with it. And there it is, the completed skeleton archer. I'm, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I think most people are critical of their own painting, <laughs> and I am certainly fall into that category. I like it. It's definitely probably one of the better minis I've painted. The colors are muted. The dry brushing really helped tone some of the sharp colors down. The 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 skeleton bones look really good in person. I mean the they this is probably the best skeleton I've ever done. Uh, they wanted the instructions uh, had me mix one drop black with two drops water to dot the eyes. And after I've done it, I actually kind of now wish I hadn't have done that. I think it looked better without it. But again, that's just my opinion. I don't know if this video is going to do it justice. I will take some close up photos and uh, in, and put those at the end of the video. The grass looks good. It looks dark in this video, but in person, the, the green-yellow mixture really brightened it up a little bit. The feet look a little dark. I'm not sure if that's from the washes coming down, but uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. I really like the quiver and the leather. It's uh, It's got an aged look to it with the uh, dry brushing, and also the, the feathers were really dark, and then by adding that last bit of blue and white, it really makes them pop out. You can see the individual, you know, arrows there. I can't really tell much about the tips. There was a silver that I applied at the end, dry brushing, that was supposed to give it a polished look, and they do look shiny, and I can see the light reflecting off of it, but I, I can't tell a difference. I don't know if that last bit of dry brushing really did much. As for the bow, the dry brushing really did a nice job on it. It has a, it has a real wood 
color, color to it. I don't know the texture, the, the softness of it. It looks really, I just really, that's my favorite part, I think. I don't know, maybe the quiver. But, um, but overall, I'm really happy with it. And again, this is something that uh, I've been wanting to do for a while, is get into painting minis. And uh, I think this is going to be a never-ending uh, skill. You know, there's always going to be something to learn. One of my problems with painting minis by myself is, you know, the bone looks so good, but I would never have known to, say, start with uh, the, the desert sand and then dry brush with the mountain stone. I just wouldn't have known that. So, you know, now that I know, I know that, you know, if I ever want to paint a skeleton similar, that's what I've got to have. It's just one of those, you know, things you just got to learn it. And I'm just going to have to start paying attention to some of these videos online and learning, you know, what colors mix well together and how to get realistic shades and such. But I hope you like this. I, I got to say, I was really, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed doing this. And I'm looking forward to doing the next two figures. I'm not going to do those back to back. I'm going to take a break from painting minis and go on to some terrain. But down the road, I will uh, tackle the second one. Again, hope you like this. It was the Reaper Learn to Paint Kit. And if you're looking to do what I just did and, and get some paints and, and practice, it's definitely a great little kit to have. I'll see you in the next episode.